Patrick here. I'm going to attempt to do a small QGIS tutorial. QGIS is a wonderful open source desktop based software that allows you to create a map through open source layers of maps that exist online. Um, so you might have seen ArcGIS in various browsing that you've done and seen different kinds of government mapping or uh, just mapping software that exists as a platform. QGIS is kind of the same thing, or QGIS, but it's your desktop uh, capability to build your own custom map, which can then be exported as a PDF or presumably other useful formats. I haven't really used it a whole lot, so I'm kind of experimenting and discovering how it works myself. But uh, some of the motivation for this is basically creating better mapping for hiking and trekking. Uh, you might also explore maybe property purchasing or perhaps you are working in an industry where you need to look at satellite imagery and compare it to different kinds of existing topo maps and other kinds of maps. It's basically any sort of mapping uh, that you need to do, you can do pretty easily with QGIS and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, it's very interesting, uh, especially if you're into hiking and trekking. So with that, let's get started. Um, so I'm going to start off by opening up uh, QGIS. This is what the project, this is what the main screen looks like when you uh, just start it on a Mac. Um, let's see if I can get my, this, I might have to shrink this and then keep this here so you can continue to see me or I might just cover myself. Um, basically um, it's very confusing because it's an open source software uh, built over many years, lots of different inputs involved. It's kind of like an old-school desktop software, so it's not necessarily the most user-friendly to start off with, but once you get to know where things are, you can uh, pretty easily navigate around and, and do the basic stuff. So uh, we're going to start off by uh, looking at what the project format is. Uh, the main file for QGIS uh, is called a QGZ, a .QGZ file. Um, here I've got <clears throat> a number of QGIS projects that I've started uh, for different hikes that I've done and I'd like to start a new project so I'm going to open this one and open up this whitechuck.qgz file as kind of my blank slate. Uh, now I did add actually, I did actually just uh, copy this um, project from another uh, project I had done um, just to, to kind of fill some stuff in and show an example. Uh, but I can delete a bunch of this stuff and save it and uh, and still kind of start from scratch. But I just wanted something to show uh, to get started with. So, you know, to start off with, uh, we've got basically this is the Puget Sound and Washington State area. And I've done some mapping uh, in the Olympic uh, Peninsula wilderness area. Uh, basically mapped what was called the Quilcene River area. Um, and essentially what I did is uh, imported the, the base map, which is the USGS topo base map. You can see these little topo lines on there, and that's kind of the underlying map. And then I overlaid my own, uh, my own kind of uh, GPS tracks on here. So these are GPX tracks that I had found online. And then I used that to create um, a... a a PDF to, that I could export later that was a nice fancy map that we actually used on the trail and it just printed that PDF off at uh, was it Office Max or some kind of local uh, print shop basically so uh, just to kind of show you a little bit more here um, we've got the US topo base map underneath so if you click on and off you can see that there and then uh, campsites I've added shelters peaks parking etc and then these are the GPS maps and I don't quite exactly remember how these uh, GPS maps uh, these GPX maps got uh, imported I know it has to do with this uh, browser over here but we're gonna kinda walk through that and try to uh, figure that out as a part of this tutorial so that being said um, I know that uh, the area that I'm trying to map, <clears throat> Whitechuck Mountain, 
when it's in a completely different area. So I'm not necessarily going to delete that stuff now, uh, but I'm going to go navigate over to where White Chuck Mountain was, and um, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll try to create a, a peak symbol uh, to start off with, uh, you know, showing where that peak was, and uh, even better yet, I might just start off by going online and hunting for. Uh, uh, GPX trail that I can just kind of add into this map and I'll just zoom in to get started on on better mapping so you know good way to find GPX trails is something like all trail I mean the, the all trails there's all sorts of mapping trails mapping uh, platforms out there all trails is one of them um, and here I've searched for white chuck mountain trail has a bunch of ratings and uh, I'm going to download the route. I'm going to download that route as a GPX track. There's also GPX route. I'm not really sure what the difference between that is. There's also Google Earth and so on and so forth. I think a lot of I think G, uh, QGIS will possibly take in almost anything you throw at it. But I know GPX seems to be the most uh, kind of universal. So I'm going to start off with that. And then my finder. I'm going to go ahead and put that into into the project I'm working on here. Uh, now where is that? That's under QGIS and then the project and then under White Chuck just so I've got um, I suppose a sources file uh, because all of this I'm going to actually push and add up into uh, GitHub uh, later on just so I've got all of my different sources files but we'll start off by that GPX. So alright so back into QGIS um, so let's see here. So you got layers. You can create layers. Um, uh, you got map elements. Um, you know, a layer. I think a layer is going to be uh, possibly each element is the same as a layer. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, so I'm not sure if I really need to create a new layer or if I just want to import a GPX. Um, but a good way, if you're not sure, because QGIS is so deep and has so many features, a good way to just get started is, you know, Google, how do I import a GPX uh, file into QGIS? And likely there are going to be all whole sorts of, all sorts of um, tutorials. Um, there could be some G QGIS documentation, and there's probably YouTube. Here you go. There's actually YouTube videos on um, how to use QGIS all over the place as well, just like this could possibly be a YouTube video. So I'm um, not going to do YouTube first. I'm just going to try to go to the fastest possible route of finding this. So to add GPS waypoints tracked, you will first need to move them to the computer. We did that. Download it uh, with other files. GPX file has been included, for example. Select Layer, Add Vector Layer, and choose GPX file from the list in, browse, in the browse data box. All right, so let's try that. So we can go back up to layer, uh, add layer, add vector layer. Okay, all right, now we're gonna have to find this file somehow. Um, I see it's gonna do, well, like it's on automatic encoding and we're gonna go into this browser here and there it is right away. Okay, so we're gonna open that up and then click add okay add layers and there it went it seemed to seem to add it over here so I'm gonna go take a look oh and there it is you can see it on the map so I am um, there's ways of organizing your different layers and and things that you add into QGIS so I may have made a mistake and I may have wanted to actually group this into kind of like a grouping uh, but let's just just so we can kind of have more fun here I'm gonna zoom in on this trail and see what it shows us Okay, so interestingly, it's uh, formatted as a bunch of different dots, and um, I actually just recently uh, walked this trail, so I kind of recognized some of it. I remember this was kind of a not so difficult flat. You know, you're watch walking along a, a ridge line, and eventually you get over to this area, and then eventually, oh, now here's a problem. This is an interesting. I'm glad I did this. So the base map, uh, the USGS topo base map, has a maximum resolution or maximum scale. 
So we are now at one to seven, uh, one, uh, one to one seven five six, and it, unfortunately, the USGS topo map is going to have a maximum. I don't remember what that is. So, but it's only going to uh, show up um, to a certain extent. And if you want something better, uh, that's going to zoom in even even closer. You're going to have to find a different source, which we can cover that in a few minutes here. Um, but Basically, what we did is uh, we've got, you know, a, a really basic uh, GPX layout, and it goes up to the peak here. And um, I'm sure, uh, you know, <clears throat> I could add another base layer to uh, get a better perspective. But I'm sure this is probably the peak. If not, we could go and verify that by just searching something like, you know, White Chuck Mountain Peak. GPS coordinates. Okay. And there it's going to come up right away. So there's some nice pictures. And uh, so then how do I add a single GPS coordinate into the map? Well, I'm just going to Google. Okay, map coordinate. So how to map a single set of coordinates. All right. Click the down arrow next. Okay. I'll look at along the border to the left of the legend window are a series of data icons. The very bottom icon lets you create a new GIS data file. Click the darn arrow next to the icon, select add new shape file. All right. Okay, so it's over here. Got this little, I recognize this menu on the left hand side and we're going to go click on this thingy and then new shape file layer. Then from the pop-up window, select point. Uh, you can change the coordinate system. Let's, let's look at that. That's, this is interesting here. Okay, so all right, now I'm I don't have that same layout, but I've got this this icon up here. I think they're looking at perhaps what you would see on Windows or Linux. I'm on the Mac version, but I know this is uh, this is the what I think they're talking about is a virtual layer. Um, yeah, these are these are ways to actually. Oh, okay. This is this is going to be probably good to know about is just those icons and the different kinds of layers. So uh, geo package layer is going to be uh, probably something like a base map. And if you, if you add a geo uh, package layer, you can link to the database name, including ArcGIS uh, databases, and, uh, and then import that. And that's probably how I imported the USGS topo map, map base. Um, so that's kind of like you know, large package files. And, and uh, as you could probably tell, it's, since I'm connected to the internet, it's actually downloading imagery as I scroll along. So it's not like it's downloading the entire Earth. It's just downloading the map and then as you scroll it's going to download the actual uh, you know component tree or data points to the map uh, but uh, what we were looking for is let me get a reminder of what we're actually looking for so so this is called we're looking for a shapefile layer and I don't know what that is but um, we're very about an icon like GIS too. it doesn't say what that icon is but we're, we're going to look for shapefile file layer Okay, so let's see here. Right here, it says virtual layer, and then this one, shapefile layer. Okay, so we're going to do a, a shapefile layer, and I'm going to uh, call it um, White Chuck Mountain Peak. All right, and then I'm going to use this uh, EPSG 432684. I think this is what is known as the 1984 GPS standard coordinates. If you have a uh, actual GPS, uh, you, you should pick those coordinates as well, or at least know what coordinate system you're working with so you can map everything back over to what you're going to be using in GPS. I know there's a bunch of different coordinate systems here. It only shows two, but I know there's just tons and tons of them. And so if you have a GPS, uh, you'll be able to see some of those things. All right, so the new, f uh, new field, uh, da, 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 da. All right, so what we're going to do is, let's see, geometry type up point. Okay, all right, and that's interesting because it's giving us a .shp file. That seems to be the, uh, maybe it's going to save that file in, in the folder. We'll see here. And then um, how do we actually add this here? We're going to say, um, let's see, um, new field name. I'm going to say white chuck. Mountain Peak again. No, it doesn't allow us to do that. I'm going to say 001, type integer, decimal, date, um, precision, 
add to fields list. Oh, it just added nothing. Um, let me go back here. What does this do? Uh, that's just the different types of coordinate systems. So the UGS 84, let's see, let's go back here. We can change the coordinate. Hit OK, hit the OK button. In the second window, you give your point shapefile a name and designate which directory it should be stored in. Okay. Now you have an empty shapefile that's accessible from the legend window. Um, select the newly created layer and right click. Okay, we're going to do that. So we're going to, okay, so really we're just saving it at this point. Um, and I shouldn't have done that. Uh, file encoding system geometry type point. And I guess it's, oh, here. So this is where I could choose where to save this shape file, I suppose. Here we go. Okay, yeah, we're saving it in the, in the folder that we'd, we'd like to. All right. Save layer as uh, white chuck peak. All right, and it's going to hopefully be a dot shape file. Nope, white chuck peak dot shape, and it gave us the whole path. All right, sorry. All right, cool. So now we've got, all right, so now we've got our shape file, and then I was supposed to right click, and I'm supposed to <coughs> add layer notes or add add something to it. Uh, change the data source of the, the attri attribute table. Is that what it was? Um, well, let's just go back to our um, tutorial here. So now that you have an empty shape file that's accessible from the legend window, uh, that was the legend window on the bottom left, select the new created layer and right click. From that menu appear, uh, appears select toggle editing from the list. Okay. Okay, toggle editing. You are ready to add a point. Within, with editing toggled on, there should be a pencil icon. Um, click Add Feature. Okay, let's Add Feature. All right, so let's try to toggle editing first. Okay, so right click, toggle editing. Okay, there we go. And now I see a pencil. And then I see this should be Add Feature, Add Point Feature. And, oh. It just wants me to add it. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go ahead and just add it, and we'll assume that's that's the peak there. ID. Um, I don't know. Peak. Zero one. Okay. Zero one. No. Okay. Try that. Oh, and there. There's so there's a there's a feature. Now, what if we want to actually edit that <clears throat> point? What if we what if we did the wrong point? Um, that's Okay, we're going to say save layer edits. All right. Oh, what is this? This is, uh, I guess, <laughs> well, I guess what we established is we can add a point to the map, but I didn't establish how to make that point correspond exactly to um, whatever the GPS coordinates I precisely want it to be, right? So um, what does this do for us? Vertex, vertex editor. Um, but somehow there's got to be a way to do that. There's got to be a way to edit this precise uh, shape. Let's see here. Toggle editing, current edits. <clears throat> there's going to be a way to actually edit that shape, but at least we know how to add the shape. And uh, so you can add, you can always add things manually, um, maybe figuring out how to edit the exact coordinate is better for a future tutorial so that I can kind of keep moving along here with the general overview. All right, so that's how you add a point and how you add tracks that are existing. Um, you know, I, I know with this this whole like adding points, there's also um, the ability to add, uh, oh yeah, symbols, all right, so you can add symbols and you can actually import symbol libraries. So I think the, I think the library they give you is pretty dull. Yeah, it's just like a few pretty dull um, libraries there. But you can always either uh, import them or let's see here. Yeah, there's ways of importing additional symbols and creating your own symbols, whether they be just hex hexagons or something. Um, you might be able to create it as sort of like a an SVG file, and then um, and then import that. But um, you basically have the ability to to grab these these symbols and and replace them. So right now we're just a dot, 
and uh, <clears throat> let's say we wanted to change that to a different kind of point. Um, let's see here. Start that over again. Uh, so styles, styles, edit symbol. Well, I know for sure we can change the color. We know how to do that. So that's how the color would be changed. Um, and then, well, I guess we'll just add one of these for now. Uh, but okay, so here's here's how you're how you can. So I think you have to go online and find additional uh, symbols. There's symbol libraries that you can. Oh, here we go. Browse online styles. Here we go. Um, Okay, it's pulling up <clears throat> some plugins. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's all sorts of styles with all sorts of different markers and so forth uh, that other uh, folks have have designed um, and have available for you. Um, so you can you can download that, and presumably we're going to put it in the same you know project folder um, that we've done that we've started for everything else we're working on. The point is you can grab all these different kinds of files. And I don't think it's just limited to plugins.qgis.org. I think there's all sorts of files all over the web. But <clears throat> for now, we're just going to use that um, marker. And then I'm going to click, uh, I'll do the star, click OK. Yeah, so now, bang, there's a big uh, explosion mark <clears throat> at the top of our peak. That's not really, I don't really like that as a peak marker, I, I prefer a triangle. <coughs> we'll keep it for now. But anyway, so this is a really crappy map that I just put together in a super short period of time. Um, now, what do you do if you want to export this to a different kind of file, like say a PDF? Well, then you're actually going to have to do something a little bit more tricky. Um, you're going to need to go to, uh, I think, there's like a another here we go layout manager there's layout manager so I'm gonna save this first off so all I've been really doing is mapping like the action of actually mapping and you know the the process of mapping is is gonna be different than the process of putting together an actual map right so the process of mapping is putting together points and symbols and uh, saying, you know, we know based on our coordinate system, here is the base layer and then here are the points that we want to establish along our map. That's the process of mapping. It's mapping from one to two. But the process of actually cartography, let's say, creating an actual map that a human will look at is going to draw from our database that we just created here. And it's going to, uh, you're going to need to go into a layout manager and uh, you're gonna have to create a new layer okay we'll say um, test layer and then it's it's like we're we're actually grabbing stuff from our map right grabbing from our actual mapping process if you think of a map like a database and we're gonna add it into the actual cartography. The I know in Spanish you called it a carta. So we're adding the map into a carta, or the we're we're adding it into our cart. Um, <clears throat> so now, how do we do that? <laughs> okay. So this is the QGIS documentation. Click click on Project Layout Manager. Yep, we did that. Empty layout, yep, create. We did that. Now we have the print layout the window. Yes, we saw that. Okay. You could also create this via project new print button. Okay. Whichever you take you now, it's now accessible from project layouts menu. So we're gonna go do a basic map composition. Alright, so this the size is already figured out for us. Okay, it's a four size landscape orientation. We might do a different size based on however this the final form of this map is gonna be. Um, now, click Add Map button. Okay, we'll go back over here. Layout Manager. Where's our Add Map button? Was that this one? Yep. Okay, and then it wanted us to drag it. Oh, I guess that makes sense because you might want some bleed. You might want some white space around the edge of the map. 
Okay, now we're rendering the map. Boom, there it is. Okay, that was awesome. All right, so so now this is this is what you would possibly just purely call a a map, right? This is our our in Spanish our uh, carta, and um, it's basically what you could send to the printer as a PDF, and that's going to establish um, you know maybe you use it in your hiking. Um, or you know maybe maybe you say this is it, but the problem with this map, of course, is we're lacking GPS coordinates. So if we have this map of like rivers and streams and kind of a topo map, maybe that's useful. But we can make it even more useful by putting GPS coordinates up along the sides. Um, we could put additional landmarks. So like for example, I know this uh, <clears throat> part of the hike. Um, if I can zoom in, well. I know this park over here had a lot of really pretty ugly scrambling. So, you know, from experience, I might say this, uh, you know, I might put like a marker on here. Um, I know parking was over here and this area of the, of the hike was actually pretty easy. So I might go back and just zoom in on this part of the hike and get a much higher resolution topo map that I can work with just to, you know, make a more interesting useful map right I might determine that this is this is actually the stuff we want to deal with and then I also know you can you know this is another philosophy of map making point you might read some information that people wrote physically and it's not on an actual uh, uh, database anywhere right because the uh, the map the first phase of what we did was actually a database and they, no one may have actually written to a database hey be careful for this spot on the map, right? Uh, so you could you could read through any sort of raw text online, any comments on a forum, and someone could say, "Be careful, because right before the peak, about 20 yards, there's some horrible cliff, and you could fall to your death." Well, you could put that into your database, right? Into the not not here, not the map layout. You could start out by putting it into the uh, <clears throat> QGIS database writer right as a point and then send it over to your layout mark it in a way that's useful to whoever is whoever is using that map perhaps yourself and you've got a much better uh, map layout essentially than you would have uh, perhaps there's no map that exists in this part of the world that you're uh, you're hiking in right so um, you're, you're, this is getting into making a very useful custom map that's custom to the hike that you're actually going on. And uh, I find it, I, you know, I've found a lot in my life that you never can really tell what is going to be on your hike. You can look at maps that are out there, you can look at Google Earth, um, but nothing is really as clear cut as it ever seems, just kind of glancing at things. So making your own map and really spending uh, disciplined time concentrating on what's on the ground and reading through what's there can be a way to uh, really improve your hikes and really improve your packing, uh, have the right type of equipment. And uh, so that's, that's part of why I wanted to put this kind of short little introduction together. It's not really a tutorial. It's just kind of an introduction of what QGIS is and why it might be helpful for a hiker. So that's all I wanted to talk about. Thank you very much for watching.